happy, glorious Monday to everyone here. So what happens when you're running out of white racists? <laughs> Sorry. I wasn't even meant to be funny. <laughs> oh, that was great. That's never happened before. The setup gets a joke. Well, when you run out of white racists, like Doritos, you gotta make more. And that means it's time for This Guy Blows. Brought to you by Sugar-Free Candy. Ruining Halloween since 1962. I don't, think, I don't think that's real. Yep, Charles Blow is the worst writer in America. It's either him or the guy who keeps writing dwarf on my office door. <laughs> Tyrus. But Blow, whose name is short for blowing smoke up his own ass, takes a tale involving Latino leaders in L.A. making bigoted remarks about blacks and calls it proof of white supremacy. Yes, a Latina smears a black person, but that's white racism, making white supremacy look more diverse than a 1980s Benetton ad. Remember those? He calls it light supremacy, which copies white supremacy. Because when a brown-skinned minority says something anti-black, they obviously cribbed it from the whites. So I guess you can judge how racist someone is by the sunblock number they use. The higher the number, the more chance you have of being racist. I use a 45. <laughs> so basically, I'm a grand wizard. It's racism light, half the pigment and all the calories. Of course, non-whites can be bigoted from Louis Farrakhan to Joy Reid, but that's not what Blow is saying. He's saying that there are different levels of pigment power, and the lighter ones are what he calls white adjacent, which sounds like Sherwin Williams' newest color. The paint store, cat. Anyway, but when these bigots insult blacks, they learn such bad behavior, of course, from the whites. But isn't that belief racist in itself that Latinos aren't smart enough to be racist on their own? They had to copy whitey? And I guess Blow never assumed that, assumed that such behavior could have been learned from him. This guy plays the race card more than Liz Warren trying to get into Harvard. So, okay, now even brown people are white supremacists. Lighter becomes whiter when brown scoffs at black. The Crayola Crayons Research Department must be pulling their hair out. And consider poor Larry Elder, who was once smeared as the face of white supremacy. He's thinking, damn, another job taken from a black man. <laughs> Tough break, Larry. Even Relief Factor can't ease that pain. <laughs> Great product, by the way. <laughs> but while Blow claims to condemn racial, racial tribalism, he then does the same thing, seeking a new racial team sport and dividing the teams based on darkness. Instead of shirts against skins, it's skins against darker skins. Now, if we follow Blow, it's as if whiteness itself is an evil substance, and there are gradients, uh, gradients of it that contribute to racism. But maybe it's time that we replace the word racism with whiteness and save everyone the time. You know, in the bad old days, being white made you racist. Now being racist makes you white, even if you're brown or white light. I wonder how they feel if Blow came up to them and said, what's up, lighty? <laughs> True, if this guy saw a black squirrel being attacked by a gray squirrel, he would say the gray squirrel learned that from the white people. <laughs> Who knew white supremacists were so lazy? One minute they're marching with tiki torches, now they're outsourcing their racism to immigrants. Finally, Blow ties us all to the wish to defund police, the most disastrous anti-black policy since they canceled the Jeffersons. It's true. If you don't support defunding, then you're racist against blacks. There's not much wiggle room there. Blow so shallow, he should wear no diving sign around his neck. But we know a decline in policing hurts blacks more than any policy of the last 30 years. Also, black people want more police. And look at the skin color of the dead since the crime wave exploded. They're mostly black, but Blow only sees pigment among the living because the dead don't respond to his clickbait. So what's this all come down to? Well, Charles's own, ra it's his own racist meal ticket. You really gotta hate white people to concoct this kind of feverish hate dream. And also you gotta see it as your career. 
Blow is a one-trick pony trying to survive in the media landscape. He can't ever say racism has diminished because if he says that, he will be out of a race-baiting job. So no wonder he's expanding the dating pool of bigotry. He's like a horny dude changing his Tinder radius from 10 miles to planet Earth. <laughs> Who hasn't done that? <laughs> Plus, he knows his employer can't ever fire him, right? That's racist, he'll say. He's learned well over the years watching Hall of Fame race baiters from Sharpton to Sean King to Joy Reid. You need to expand the accusatory net of racism, even if it means that you're saying all the hard work of civil rights leaders of the past 60 years made things worse. It's so odd that people like Blow are called progressives because for them, nothing ever progresses. It just gets worse. In his tiny little mind, it's still 1958. And really, that blows. Let's welcome tonight's guests. People think it's cologne, but he's actually stinking rich. Host of Making Money on Fox Business, Charles Payne. <laughs> She's like a Vespa, Italian, and goes too fast for a normal conversation. <laughs> Outnumbered co-host, Emily Campagno. <laughs> She's like a fresh sheet of paper, white, blank, and ready to cut you. Fox News contributor, Cat Tiff. <laughs> and sleeping dogs let him lie. My massive sidekick in the NWA World Television Champion, Tyrus. Charles, as always, you look fantastic. Well, thank you very much. Yes, amazing tie and jacket <laughs> ensemble. And I like the little uh, handkerchief, too. That's a nice touch. Thank you. It's whimsical. It is whimsical. <laughs> you bring a smile to my face. Do you think, I mean, this is an obvious question, when somebody is constantly lab labeling everybody as racist, the people who are off the hook are the real racists. You know, like Brian Kilmeade. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, it's, it's, I mean, you hit it right on the head. Uh, for a lot of these folks, it's about money and power. Mm -hmm. I remember the day after President Obama was elected, the NAACP sent out a bunch of emails saying it's going to get worse now. Mm -hmm. it, this major milestone, but if you take away this, what do they have? What power source do they have? And it's unfortunate because when there is a real issue of racism, it's like, well, <laughs> what the hell? You don't want Charles Blow. Listen, according to the New York Times... COVID-19 was racist. Yeah. Climate change is racist. Like, I'm like, golly, it's tough being a brother in America because, like, like <laughs> everything is me. racist, yeah. right? I mean, the, if it rains, it's racist. If it, you know, everything is against me. But it's not me I'm worried about. It's the kids who have to grow up in this sort of environment. And as a little black kid, you always get, the messages never stop. It's starting from the very top. Every time President Biden speaks to black people, it's about they're coming to get you. Mm -hmm. And then someone like Charles Blow e echoes that. And it's really a shame. Yeah, they, there was some poll that found that people thought that we were less racist 30 years ago than we are now, which means that even though we've made race the central focus of so many things, it only made things worse, Emily. And I blame you for that. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been around that long. Yes. I agree with you. And I'll add on to the statement of they're coming to get you. And so this is how you should think, and this is how you should vote, and this is how you should feel. And that is the message. That well, it's like only we can protect you. Mm -hmm. Only exactly. we care about you. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, of course, the, the exchange is the, it's true. You'll get trinkets. We'll give you some trinkets for your protection and your vote. I yeah. love trinkets. <laughs> Who doesn't love swag? But you're right, because then, then, then that recipient is beholden right. to the person who's extending. It's a Faustian deal. That's right. Um, and I see that, too, with this, which is, remember when everything was about Latinx or Latinx, right? And then all of a sudden, only 3% of Hisp Hispanic Americans actually identified or wanted that. We know now that almost 7 out of 10 Hispanic Americans are voting toward or prefer the GOP or conservative ideals. So maybe perhaps the Democrat Party, the progressive left is seen, is that, is that a lost group? Is that a lost monolith that mm -hmm. they wanted to shove in a box, that they wanted them to vote a certain way? And since they've lost them, perhaps, oh, now, fine, you're just white supremacists. Is that the narrative? That's an interesting point if they're, like, saying, screw Screw you, you're just like everybody else. Like we're gonna cut our losses. Tyrus, how lucky am I that now we got other racists? Huh? <laughs> so tired. Of, I'm so tired of being the face. Yeah. You know, it's like you know, uh, it's always a lot of firsts, you know. <laughs> and uh here I am sitting in this chair. 
about to defend white supremacists. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, they didn't work hard for generations to keep their gene pool going this way to have someone just take it all away from them and just give it to somebody else. Like, yes! They're coming! You know, they're stealing white supremacists' jobs! They gave up success and education to invest in trailer homes for a reason. <laughs> and you're not just gonna take it away from them. You know, it drives me crazy because we just can't say, hey, those, uh, that were talking bad about brothers just happen to be Latino. <laughs> the bigger reason is they're just Yes, you exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, every group is not above having someone you wish wasn't in your group. Amen. White people. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> when that group acts up, if, if Blow had any backbone, he would have had the guts to attack the individual. Mm -hmm. But that's not what the woke do. They create individuals and the facades it's a group. Mm -hmm. So this one or two or th individual said something about, it. hey, we're used to it. We're, we're, we used to be the backbone for everyone's complaint when we just keep winning. That's what we do. But instead of having, the, the, you make the group. Mm -hmm. So it's the whole thing. And now you guys get the taste because back when I was growing up 30 years ago, it was worse. Yeah. yeah whenever something bad happened, in the news, I'd be like this, please don't be a brother. Yeah. Please don't be a brother, because that had a residual effect where everyone would blame all of us for this, the sins of one. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to do that now, yeah, where it, they try to blame one per Oh, that one person, and the, and the rest of the world is good saying, no, that gut feels wrong. Mm -hmm. But for them, it's more comfortable to say all white people are wrong, because then they can create that horrible article that I read about half of it before I said, you know what, I'm dumber for this. Yeah, exactly, and that's what it was. It was about a column. You know, Kat, you'd say the same thing to me. It's like, you just get so angry when a skinny white girl does something really bad. <laughs> you go like, oh God, another woman throwing a bottle on a plane because they wouldn't let her dog sit in the front row. They always let my dog sit in the front row. <laughs> I think I actually completely understand how and why he wrote this. Mm -hmm. I think it w I don't think he was dying to write about this. Mm -hmm. I think he knew he had to write about something. <laughs> you know, like, I've been we've there. all been there. Yeah. He didn't know what to write about. He's like, all right, there's these Mexican school board members that are kind of racist. <laughs> so I'll write this whole thing about how they're really racist and it doesn't mean it represents everybody, but I can still write about how maybe it could. Yeah. And then he's done. But obviously it's, it's harmful and it's dumb but I think that's probably what happened because it makes no sense. I mean, at the very top, he says he's not saying what he goes on to sort of say the whole rest of the time. And he writes a whole article about white supremacy without mentioning a single white person. Yeah, that's incredible. And well, the you... New York Times amplifies it. That's yeah. the other thing. This could have been some guy that just put that on his Instagram, but instead, the New York Times consistently gives him a huge platform when he repeats himself all the time because it's always the same outrageous claims that it's all about skin color. Yeah. Because they share the same talking points. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the narrative. So it doesn't matter what it means as long as he says the right things. White supremacists, the rest of us are struggling, and he's the only one who can save us. Yeah. There you go. Mm -hmm. All in a nice little package, much like me. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.